Bølgen, The Wave. The municipality of Vejle arranged the competition about making use of an area at Skyttehusbåden. The competition was won by Henning Larsen Architects with Bertil Nielsen AS as building owner. The first two houses of Bullion were finished in 2009. They quickly became a landmark for Weile, and Bullion has received a lot of prizes. But due to the financial crisis, the last houses were not built until 2018. At the bottom, there is a base which raises the house above the harbour promenade to prevent curious people from watching. Above the base, there are concrete floors. They get shorter upwards and they are supported by a shell of steel structures. The roof is covered with tiles which are dirt repellent and treated with anti-graffiti. Fjornhus, House of the Inlet in June 2018, Kirk Capital's headquarters at the Harbour Island in Weile was opened. It was designed by the Danish Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson, who never before has designed houses. He has also created all the works of art in Fjornhus and designed most of the furniture. In 2010, Kirk Capital purchased the 24,000 square meters Harbour Island from Weile Municipality and the projection of Fjornhus could begin. The building activity was started in 2013 and completed in 2018. The artist often works with circles and ovals. The basic elements of Fjorn Hus are four cylinders that correspond to the silos at Weile Harbour. Inside the cylinders there are arches and ovals so there is not one single flat wall in the building. It is clear that you can't build such a house with trowel, string and level. Therefore, we'll take a closer look at the process. First they made a dry dock for the building. The company Oslef made a sheet piling of 25 meter long interlocking steel plates around the upcoming building, emptied the area of water and mud and knocked 517 concrete piles up to 20 meters into the bottom. The concrete piles were cut off so that they were all equally long and now they could start making a concrete floor over the bottom of the inlet. Meanwhile, the artist and the architects had worked on the basic idea. New drawings and models of the different ideas were made. Eventually, this design was established. After that, the drawing office has made detailed drawings 
of the various building parts in a drawing program that can show the ideas in 3D and deliver 3D data. Now a concrete skeleton was to be cast which would support and control the masonry. With the curved and slanted walls of the house, it can't be done by means of classical shuttering methods. Oriko in Odense has developed a revolutionary technique where they can make a robot cut even the most complex forms in polystyrene. The robots are fed with data from the architect's drawings and can cut the polystyrene in the desired shapes using a glow wire. Fjorn Hus is the first building in the world which is built using this technique which goes about a hundred times faster than manual processes. Orico is the only company that has developed this technology to an industrial scale. To Fjorn Hus, Orico has delivered 4,500 square meters of polystyrene. So 120 lorries with polystyrene have found their way from Odense to Weile. The concrete skeleton was made of many smaller modules. They were molded on the very building site and lifted in place with a crane. We imagine that we will mold a module. We start by placing the polystyrene pieces. And here the polystyrene is supported by means of shuttering and concrete is poured into the middle rooms. The work of concrete and brick was carried out by Yorton. In order to practice the process with concrete and bricks, a 10 meter high mug-up was made of a particularly difficult detail in the building. The module was in one-to-one -one aspect ratio and gave important experiences to the final construction. Most of the bricks are produced by Peterson Brickyard in Denmark. There are 21 different kinds of bricks. The greenish shades are used close to the water surface. Up against the sky there are many blue bricks. At some places there are square and round bricks which are made by hand in Berlin. Some bricks have holes and are used for ventilation, while others are soundproofing. In the staircases the bricks are kept in cold grey colours. Certain bricks are coated with titanium. The longer you get up, the more titanium bricks there are. Detailed drawings were made for each and every wall surface, showing how each brick was to be laid. The brickyard sorted the bricks by help of a robot. On each pallet, the bricks were laid in the order they were to be used. Some of the bricks were laid a little inaccurately to give the building a rustic and castle-like touch. The curved windows provide many great reflections. It has been a difficult task to produce them. The window frames were made in Austria and the glass was made in Italy. It was a problem that curved glass usually refracts the light but the company found a method to neutralize this phenomenon. The doors are also specially developed.
The granite on the floors is laid in a radial pattern, which is also found in the ceilings. In the basement, ventilation and technology are stored. Under the water, Olaf Eliasson has set up a work of art made of six steel plates. It is illuminated from below. The artwork looks widely different depending on the water level, wind and light conditions. In one of the mirrors under the ceiling, the work of art can be seen. This is the circle mirror. It consists of luminous half rings that are fixed to each of their mirrors. In the first room, the meridian, consisting of three rings, symbolizes the three Kirk brothers. Casper, Morton, and Annas. In one of the towers, there is a spotlight under the ceiling. It illuminates the water surface, which therefore sends reflections to the ceiling. During the day, the same effect can be seen with the rays of the sun. In one of the towers, there is a work of art which symbolizes a swirl in the inlet. It is made of stainless steel and is equipped with triangles of mouth-blown glass. At the top, it is 7 meters in diameter. In the evening, the work of art is illuminated. There are staircases in three of the cylinders of the house. Inside the spiral stairs, there are elevators. The inner sky is at the top of the building. The artwork is 353 centimeters in diameter and directs sunlight into the building. When dark, the artwork is illuminated from the inside. This table is designed to match the pattern of the floor. The lamps in the offices are located in pipes in the ceiling. In order to make the Keelim carpet in one piece, the factory, located in India, had to purchase a larger loom. The lamps and height adjustable tables are also designed by Olafur Eliasson. The furniture in the canteen is also round. Only the oven doors are flat. View from the canteen. The pier becomes narrower towards the inlet. In the evening, the ceiling lighting of the offices and the inner sky can be seen from the outside. We finish off with a little rappelling dance on the walls. When the windows are to be washed, it is also done by rappelling from the roof.